Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have laid him. After saying this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize him. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will go and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and she looked at him and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my father and their father, to my God and their God. Mary Magdalene left that place and went and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them everything that Jesus had told her. On that first Easter morning, out of devastating heartache, from that place of weeping and loss, the first witness to the resurrection announced good news to the disciples and to the world. I have seen the Lord. This year, from our own place of weeping and loss, we continue to proclaim the good news of God's victory over sin and death. This year, out of devastating heartache, we announce, still, we have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. This year, countless years after Mary became the first witness to the resurrection, we celebrate 50 years of Lutheran women being ordained in the United States, 40 years of women of color being ordained, and 10 years of LGBTQIA individuals being able to serve freely. We look forward to celebrating these milestones in person at the 2021 Northeastern Iowa Synod Assembly in the meantime, we offer this video with gratitude for the women currently serving in our Synod as ordained ministers of word and sacrament, and for all those who came before us in the struggle for the gifts and calling of all God's people to be acknowledged and honored. All baptized Christians are called to share in Christ's ministry of love and service in the world to the glory of God and for the sake of the human family and the whole creation. We sing with the psalmist. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into the divine presence with a song. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God, the one who made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Out of this flock, God has instituted the Office of Ministry of Word and Sacrament. The Church entrusts this office to those who have accepted the Church's call. When a pastor is ordained and installed in a congregation, they receive this charge from 1 Peter 5, verses 2 through 4. Tend the flock of God that is in your charge, not under compulsion, but willingly, not for sordid gain, but eagerly, do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sins, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you. Some of our sin we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from the west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Amen.
Water, water. We praise you, O God, for water. The cedar, shower rock, Iowa skunk, upper Iowa turkey, Makokoda, Wapsi, and Mississippi rivers. The rain that nurses animals and plants. The water for drinking and bathing. We praise you, O God, for water. We, we praise, praise you, O God, God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories. A flood that cleansed the earth. The sea that drowned the enemy. A river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus. Baptized in the Jordan River. Calming the Sea of Galilee. Jacob's well, healing at the pool of Bethsaida, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love. Clothe us and all people with your grace. Embolden us to do justice. Bless us to love mercy. Guide us to walk humbly with you. We praise you, O God, for gathering your people, washed clean to serve. We praise you, O God, for gathering your people, washed clean to serve. We praise you, O God, for this font. Through this water you have birthed us into the family of Christ bathed us in forgiveness, and enlivened us in the Spirit. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We praise you, O God, for baptism. O God, you are the ocean, sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river, saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain, granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life. 
offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 17, verses 22 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out, I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In its shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but Jesus explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. grace and peace as we gather in the name of the risen Jesus, our Christ. Let's look at that gospel today from Mark 4 about seed planting and how things grow. It's beautiful. It's an appropriate image for us in an egg-related state. I served in South Dakota as bishop 
I was on the Synod staff in Western North Dakota. Those are two more egg-based states. And one year, the assembly theme was about growth and seed planting as we grow in people, as people of faith. So I thought it would be great to give every assembly attendee, everyone who came, and that was about 400 people, as I recall, a small flower to plant when they returned home. Not the seeds like the text suggested. No, we were going to have this young plant in the little square plant container, you know, and it would be ready to bloom or some of them would already be blooming. It would be beautiful, I thought. I chose marigolds. Vivid yellow color, hardy plant. Pretty inexpensive when you're buying such a quantity. Hmm, what could be wrong with this plant? Do you have any idea how many Lutherans at a synod assembly are allergic to marigolds? Lots. Lots and lots. It turned into a real sneeze fest that year. Watery eyes not because of the beauty of the assembly hall and all these lovely flowers, one in front of every single voting member. Watery eyes, running noses, hacking coughs, and unhappy people should have stayed with the seed image, which is what the Gospel of Mark does. So see, aren't you grateful to be at a virtual assembly? No telling what I would have dreamt up and inflicted on you if we had all been together in person. Mark's text quotes Jesus talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, that doesn't just mean ourselves and Jesus. It doesn't just mean our neighbors and ourselves or even our congregation and us or the synod or even if we thought of every Christian on the face of the earth. The kingdom of God is bigger, even bigger than that. The kingdom of God is all of that and then how God created the universe and set us into orbit in the heavens and everything on the earth and under the earth, the all-encompassing kingdom of God. And the example to describe what that's like from Jesus is like a seed planted, then growing at a phenomenal rate, then coming to fruition and needing to be harvested, being ready to be harvested. So we learn, at least in the first section of Jesus' teaching, that the kingdom is urgent and is growing and it is ready for harvest. In the second analogy, the kingdom, remember this is all the big kingdom, is like a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds in the world, on earth. But from it comes this mighty bush, larger than others, capable of being a home to nesting birds. Surely that's some sort of status symbol in the bush world, don't you think? So in this section, Jesus teaches the kingdom is surprising and welcoming and goes beyond expectation. What does this mean? Siblings in Christ in the Northeastern Iowa Synod today as we celebrate the beginning of a new chapter, as we prepare our hearts to call a new bishop, as we face a time of coming out of pandemic, wondering what to keep and what to let go of, as we continue to take up the work of discipleship, of being followers of Jesus in the world, what does this text say to us, bring to us, to carry today? One thing it tells us is that the kingdom of God is urgent. Well, what is urgent? Growing overnight into a crop that needs attention? That 
would in fact be urgent that must how do we think about a crop that would come that quickly to harvest and still be of good quality and and highly successful at the market how has God sown our hearts with a burning passion for being nimble and ready to work and to serve and to be workers in the field when the harvest is upon us and it's time this text has sometimes been cited, in fact, as evidence that God has grown, so to speak. God has grown enough servants of the gospel to serve the church wherever there is need. We in this part of Christ's church have struggled to fill pulpits, to recruit leaders, to gather seminarians in a time of pandemic and of changing pathways to ordination from what was always the one road and path. And our seminaries are actively creating new programs to meet the needs of the church and the needs of those individuals who are presenting themselves as called to serve Jesus. In our church today, this is urgent. The need is real. What else is urgent? The calling to reflect God's entire kingdom, big kingdom, in our communities of faith. To open our churches and our hearts to the presence of people of faith who don't look and sound like most of us do here on this Zoom meeting. Breaking down barriers of racism and standing together in diversity of gender and economics in our church today, this is urgent. Secondly, what the text says to us today, in Jesus' second section, the kingdom is described as surprising, as unlikely as a small seed producing an oversized bush where birds could nest. What is surprising in our church today? What are the unexpected evidences of God at work among us? 50, 40, 10 is the commemoration of the ordination of women decision taken by our church, the ELCA or its predecessors 50 years ago. It's a celebration for the 40th anniversary of the first African American woman to be ordained as a pastor. And it's a celebration for the 10th anniversary of our church-wide decision to recognize the calls to ordain service of humans who identify in the LGBTQ community. This is still surprising. I lived some of this surprise as one of the uh, early little mustard seeds who braved the unprepared ground of seminary and first call as a woman pastor. My journey was only a part of what women of color and LGBTQ persons have experienced. But we have all lived being the surprise of God to a church that wasn't expecting good things to come with its decisions. God has surprises in mind. The God of dependability and promised presence with God's people forever and ever, amen. That God is also the same God who surprises us with grace sufficient for each day, with new life where it seemed that death had won the day, and with hope for all the surprises yet to come. What does this text mean for us today, we ask? The kingdom of God, it means. Right here, right now, in this virtual space, filling us with a passion for all that is urgent in our world and our church, which we are uniquely able to harvest, to gather, to carry forward. What does this text mean for us today? The kingdom of God right here and now in this virtual space filling us with the surprises of what God is up to now. With God 
infusing our smallest actions and deeds with love that grows the outside and grand possibility of others of God's people finding a home here in our church with us. The kingdom of God is filled with surprises we cannot yet see. Born of seeds so small we hardly noticed they were planted. Siblings in Christ, the kingdom of God in Mark's text today, the one described by Jesus the Christ is right here and right now. God is speaking here and now to us through this word, calling us to urgency in mission and readiness for surprises of God's unique making. Thanks be to God. Amen. My friends are loyal witnesses.
Together with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountains, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, we gather as your people in homes and churches, as congregations and in synod assembly to celebrate our life of faith in you. We give thanks and pray for church musicians and those who lift our spirits with all types of music. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes with this worship time, even as it wafts to you through muted microphones from our home computers or in sanctuaries. You hear the melody of voice and instruments and the songs from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to the day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 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 Receive the blessing. God, the source of glory. God, the word of life. God, the spirit of truth. Bless you all, now and forever. Amen.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.